Now, you mentioned uh, co-redemptrix, I think, earlier. I wanted to ask you about a possible sure. fifth Marian dogma that people have been talking about, and this is the idea of Mary being mediatrix. It's almost yes. like Catholics are intent on scaring their Protestant <laughs> brethren, you know? What else can we say that could freak them out? Explain yeah. what this means to us and why we don't need to be afraid of it. Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, mediatrix, if you uh, go to Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution on the church, the council fathers actually declared Mary to be mediatrix. But there was a motion at Vatican II to define Mary as co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all grace. The fathers said no to the mediatrix of all graces and no to the co-redemptrix. And in fact, uh, as you know, um, Cardinal Rep, I, always call, I still call him Cardinal Rep, <laughs> Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, in his great book, God in the World, talks about how he was opposed to the definition mm -hmm. of co-redemptrix for a particular reason. He believed it was an abuse of language, causes way too much confusion, but he says that we have other titles of the Blessed Virgin Mary that teach the same theology, like Mother of the Church. That's the direction Paul VI went in. He defined Mary as Mother of the Church, and now we just had Pope Francis make it a feast day mm. in the Church. As Mother of the Church, of course, that's integrally related to her as a co-redemptress, because, you know, if all salvation comes through the Catholic Church, you can't get to the baptismal waters except through the womb of Mary. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. So now I happen to be, I will tell you, I happen to be a, a, a fan of co-redemptrix one day being defined. But as, do, as do, do, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, do me a favor, right? I, I, the, the, we've got an open-minded Catholic or evangelical who's nervous of this language. Could you just like yes. sum it up for us? Because like, I know it can get yes. very complicated. Could you sum it up for uh, us in a way that we're like, okay, that's what they're saying, even though this language gotcha. can sound a bit daunting? Yes, I, I think the best way to do that is go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, when St. Paul is talking about his apostolic ministry, and he says, we are co-laborers with Christ, soon ergoi in Greek. Wait a minute, how can you say you are a co-laborer? Well, he just told you why in verse 5. He says, what is Paul? What is Barnabas? But um, instruments— by which you have come to believe, he's saying to the Corinthians. And then that moves mm -hmm. into, for we are co-laborers with Christ. That's what we're talking about. Beautiful. It's not meaning that Paul is equal to Jesus. No, it means that he cooperates with Jesus in bringing salvation. And in that sense, he is a co-laborer, not in the sense of being an equal. And that's where people get tripped up. And by the way, that's one of the problems one of the problems Benedict has with co-redemptrix is the confusion that it causes with people thinking they're equal. I argue, just teach them, <laughs> you know, but... Kind of like what we were saying know, with the mother of God. Clear up the confusion after you state what's true. Absolutely, absolutely. I point out uh, Pope Benedict's position because I do believe we're not going to have a definition in the foreseeable future. But what people have to understand, it's already Catholic theology, it is what the Catholic, and as Benedict himself says, we have other images mm. that relate the same theology. She is co-redemptrix. In fact, we are all called, and this is an important part, we're all called to be co-redeemers with Christ. Mm. If you understand we are co-laborers with him, we're called to bring other people to Jesus, mm. right? And as much as we do that, we can say with St. Paul, for example, in 1 Corinthians 9, 22, he says, I've become all things to all men that by all means I might save some, right? Paul could say to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, for in so doing you will both save yourself and them that hear thee. How could the Bible be any more plain? We are called to be co-redeemers with Christ, saving mm. our own so souls as well as others. And one more, I could give you a hundred, but First Peter 3, 22, Peter says, we must purify ourselves from all defilement, purify ourselves in the truth. How can you purify yourself, man? What are you, the Savior? No, 
It's by cooperating with God's grace. And uh, well, just one more. First John <laughs> chapter one, verse seven. Here's a beautiful image of what it means to be a co-redeemer. Scripture says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, continues to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we are a liar and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. So notice, we have to do something. We have to walk in the light, and if we do, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. That's co-redemptrix, brother. By our cooperation, our sins are being taken away. Yeah, and I, if we confess our sins, yes. I, I like that a lot. So just like a Christian at Philippi or Ephesus or Rome could say, if it weren't for Paul, I wouldn't be a Christian, the exactly. entire body of Christians throughout history can say, to, to an even greater degree, if it weren't for Mary, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a Christian. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I got to point, folks, to in my section on the Immaculate Conception, I quote what is probably the most powerful homily ever preached on the Blessed Virgin Mary Ooh. at the Council of Ephesus in 431, mm. St. Cyril. When you read that homily, and I give you a good chunk of it, it is beautiful. He basically says exactly what you're saying, how that through the yes, yes of Mary, <laughs> demons are put to flight. Ooh. Right. Sins are destroyed. And it goes down the list of Mary as co-redemptrix right there at the Council of Ephesus, beautifully declared. And folks, really, this is just Christianity. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes I'll hear people say, you know, in the East, they don't talk about Mary the way that you in the West do. There's been this kind of development. But I mean, I've been going to a Byzantine church for five years now, and I can tell you, I mean, just look at the Akathist to Mary. Are you familiar wow. with that prayer, Tim? I am. I Oof, am. Baby, it's so powerful, it, it, huh? It really is. Yes. That is a, a myth because, it I is. mean, much of the Marian uh, devotion that we have comes from the East. In fact, I would remind people that St. Cyril was an Eastern father mm -hmm. at the Council of Ephesus. And you you read those words. I, I'll challenge you. When you get my book, read that section uh, in the Immaculate Conception, and you'll see it. It's, it's so beautiful. And you know what? Here, I said earlier that if you miss it on Mary, you end up missing it on who God is, on who Jesus is. But you know what else you miss? You miss it on who you are in Jesus Christ. Because Mary came not just to reveal who God is to us, but also to reveal who we are to us. And she does it so beautifully in her yes. Because when she says yes, the entire universe is changed. Now, Matt Fred and Tim mm. Staples, we're not called to cooperate in transforming the whole universe, the way <laughs> Mary is queen of the universe, right? But we are called to transform our universe, my life, my family, my wife, my kids, and those with whom I have contact. And so in the Blessed Virgin Mary, we see our own dignity, and we also see the awesome nature of our responsibility. Yeah, that's beautiful. One of my favorite little nuggets from the Akathist to Mary is where Mary is called trauma to the demons. Yes. I love the idea that she was a traumatic event that they still haven't yes. recovered from. <laughs> and I love I love in the West the hammer of heretics oh. in the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hammer why? Because you know, think about the, the Nestorians, think about the Christological heresies. If you get it right on Theotokos, you are safe and secure. Beautiful. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.